Hey, I'm Isabel and welcome back to your weekly briefing. In the past, I've covered current events and day-to-day -day news, but today we're going to do something a bit different. I wanted to talk to you guys a bit about something really important that we don't always think about as a generation, our constitution. The Constitution was created in 1787. James Madison drafted out the Constitution with the help of dozens of delegates from 12 different states, including George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, and Benjamin Franklin, to name a few. The Constitution created three branches of government, judicial, legislative, and executive. This created a system of checks and balances for the country. We live in a time with a lot of political turmoil, and I think it's really important to understand when we stand up for something, what we're standing up for, or what we're standing up against. For the first video in our series, I'm gonna break down the first 10 amendments, otherwise known as the Bill of Rights, so we can really dig deeper and try to understand which are extremely relevant today and which are maybe more outdated. So, the Bill of Rights was created in 1791, which was essentially the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. An amendment is any sort of change or addition in the form of legislation made to the Constitution. It's very important that we have the ability to make these changes and add these laws because otherwise we can't move forward or grow as a country. The First Amendment, arguably the most well-known, consists of the freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, and petition. This was a really groundbreaking one at the time because it came in an era where speaking out against political authority could lead to a death sentence. And it's really essentially what the American dream is built off of, and it's the values of America at their very core. The Second Amendment, one in the center of plenty of controversy right now, states that an individual has the right to keep and bear arms. It was created in 1791, a time when semi-automatic or automatic weapons did not exist, and it was a time when the most common gun was called a musket and could hold up to one round of ammunition. In 2019, our semi-automatic weapons can hold up to 100 rounds of ammunition. Not to mention, this amendment was ratified only a decade after the Revolutionary War, which was a little bit different circumstances than today's day and age. The Third Amendment is an interesting one because it doesn't hold much weight in today's world. It states that soldiers are prohibited from living in private homes without the consent of the homeowner. This was imperative in 1791 to ensure the free will of Americans, but we no longer live in a time where the government confiscates citizens' homes in order to quarter soldiers. The Fourth Amendment states that you have the right as a citizen to not have your personal items or space searched without proper warrant. Basically, government officials can't just barge into your home and go through all your things. This one's really important to know and understand living in America because you have the right to decline search and seizure without proper warrants. The Fifth Amendment, one of my personal favorites, states that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. One really unique aspect about the fifth is the ability to plead the fifth. You have the ability to not answer any question on the grounds that you might incriminate yourself. The Sixth Amendment builds off of the fifth. It guarantees every citizen the right to an attorney and a fair jury. This is another absolutely fundamental amendment to ensure that everyone has equal rights, even those accused. The Seventh Amendment guarantees a jury trial, which is a designated jury who look at the evidence presented in court to decide whether a defendant is innocent or guilty. The Eighth Amendment is protection from cruel and unusual punishments. All punishments must be fair. Now, one particular situation which has led many people to question the Eighth Amendment is the death penalty. Does sentencing someone to death qualify as cruel and unusual? The Supreme Court did rule that the death penalty does not violate the Eighth Amendment, but the Eighth Amendment does in a lot of ways dictate how the death penalty can be used in the court of law. The Ninth Amendment is sort of an instruction for the American people and the government. It states that there are rights that aren't explicitly mentioned in the Constitution, but that does not in any way mean they can be violated. You have the right to be able to go into a candy store, buy all the candy you want, not that I'd recommend it, but either way, that's a right that you have as an individual. The Tenth Amendment states that any powers not designated to the federal government in the Constitution are thereby placed in the hands of the people and the state. For example, traffic law. Okay, so that was a lot. To refresh, the first 10 amendments of the Constitution were known as the Bill of Rights. They were enormous to the growth of America and to ensure that the Constitution was ever growing and ever changing, just as the country was.